Hello guys, uh, in this video tutorial, I would like to explain the additive ruins of probability. Uh, there are various statements in the probability questions, but you can identify some words if these words are mentioned in the statement of the probability, particularly when they are asking about calculate the probability and there are some specific words uh, I will explain after this slide, then you can use the additive rules of probability. So let's move to the formal lecture and I will explain that which words you can see and then you can use the additive rules of probability. You can see that when you see these words in the statement of the probability question like or, either, at least, etc. Then you can use the additive rules of probability to calculate the required probability. This means that when when, when they are asking in the problem that calculate the probability of event A or B, in that case you can use additive rules of probability or if they are asking about calculate the probability of event A, either event A or B, so in that case you can use the additive rules of probability or calculate the probability of at least of the events, maybe two events or three events, that's depend on the problem. In those, in these cases, you can use the additive rules of probability. Now, what is the additive rules of probability? Let's suppose we have two events, and suppose we assume, and this, uh, and initially we assume that the events are not mutually exclusive. Assume that the events are not mutually exclusive. I explained already mutually exclusive events in my lecture uh, about types of events. So you can see that lecture. I will share the links uh, in the comments of this video. So let's suppose we have two events. Suppose we have two events. Suppose we have two events. A and B and you are asked there calculate the probability of event A or B or uh, the other statement can be calculate the probability of either event A or B or calculate the probability of at least of these events I mean at least of one of these events mean A or B so you can use additive rules of probability normally we denote this by like probability of A or B or you can say in other words probability of A union B and this is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. I will explain this graphically that why we are subtracting this comes from this. Let draw a Venn diagram for two events which are not mutually exclusive, which are not mutually exclusive, yes. Event A, event B, A, B, a intersection B. So this means that in additive rules, when the statement is like this, about which I mentioned three words in the statement, if one of those statement is given, those words is given, then you can use additive rules of probability. So in the additive rules of probability, probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. Why we subtracting probability of A intersection B? Because you can see that this is the whole event is A and this whole event is B. So this is the probability of event A or B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B. And you see this portion, this portion which is intersection, this is count twice. This portion is count in the probability of A and this portion is also count in the probability of event B. 
therefore this is counted twice therefore we subtract this portion once minus probability of a intersection b so this is the probability of a intersection uh, probability of a union b is equal to probability of a plus probability of b minus once subtract this region because this is counted twice okay so now you can extend this uh, rules to three events and you can see uh, you can see any standard book of probability and statistic you will find these rules so i'm just showing this book you can see the title probability and statistic for engineers scientists you can see that this is editor rule is given here they also explain this by one diagram so you can see you can see this book you can learn more from this so this is the same thing that uh, a b and this is counted twice so this is subtracted so probability of a or b or probability of a union b is equal to probability of a plus probability of b minus probability of a intersection c that is subtracted because once that is considered twice now you can see that you can extend this theorem this reals to more than two events here you can see that this is for three events you can write that for three events same rule for three events let's suppose you have three events a and b and c the events are a b and c so the rule is now probability of a union b union c this is equal to probability of a plus probability of b plus probability of c minus probability of a intersection b minus probability of b intersection c minus probability of a intersection c plus probability of a intersection b intersection c now i need uh, to explain this because, because why i'm doing this uh, subtraction and addition so this is the same thing when you understand this part the first part this means that for two events you can understand the second part because this is again the probability of event a plus probability of event b plus probability of event c and then you need remember that we assume that the event are not mutually exclusive i will come to the mutually exclusive event after this portion after this part of uh, this lecture so this means that probability of event a plus probability of event b plus probability of event c minus the events are not mutually exclusive keep in mind this point is important so there is a common point between a and b subtract this because this is counted here once a b c each event is count fully so this point is count once here i mean once in a and once in b because a intersection b why we subtracting this and if you understand this part you can understand this part because the intersection part is counted in a and the intersection part is count in probability of b so we subtracting this similar interpretation is for probability of intersection c and similar interpretation is for probability of a intersection c remember that this part is very important why i am using this uh, uh, addition because i am subtracting twice each component like a and a is here a is an intersection with b this is removed once a is in the intersection with c this is removed another time so two times it is removed here B is in the intersection A, it is removed once. B is in the intersection C, this is removed once. So two times removed, that is why I am adding it once. And similarly C is removed once with the B and similarly C is removed once with the A. So two eyes it is removed. Therefore, I am adding all these once more to, 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 to get the exact probability. So this is the interpretation of these, uh, I mean, for two events and for three events and you can extend it to more events now i will come 
took second case that the events are mutually exclusive. Suppose that the e events are mutually exclusive. So mutually exclusive means that if event A occur, event B cannot occur at the same time. So this means that there is no common point in these two events. This means that uh, for two events, the additive rules for two events to mutually exclusive events that is probability of a and a union b is equal to probability of a plus probability of b you can explain this by using a venn diagram so this is a look like this this so this is event a and this is b there is no common point common point so there is zero probability of the common point so we can write this simply probability of a plus probability of b remember this is in the case of mutually exclusive events similarly for three events are more than three events events a b c probability of a union b union c probability of a probability of b plus probability of c again the same interpretation because there is no common point so we don't need to include the intersection terms in this problem like this is suppose a b and c event a b and c so this is all about these problems uh, i mean that the, about the additive rules of probability for two events three events and you can extend it to the higher number of events okay now let's we have uh, we need to solve some problems to apply these rules so that we can get understand it understand it in further details so let's suppose we have a problem okay this is the first problem the problem is the probability of event a and b are the probability of event a and b are 0 0.20 and 0 0.30 respectively the probability that both a and b occur as 0.15 what is the probability of either a or b occurring okay so now we can solve this problem this is clearly given in the statement so we don't need to think very much about this problem the probability of event a is given the probability of event b is given and remember that when there is word and this means that intersection so probability of a intersection b is given let's check these probabilities once more these probabilities are 0 0.20 and 0 0.15 0 0.20 0 0.30 and 0.15 okay you can see that why i wrote probability of a intersection b so you can check there that, that the probability that both a and b occur as 0.15 this means that this is the intersection points that both occurring so this probability is 0.15 and now important thing is remember that what is the statement for what what they ask from us what is the probability of either a or b occurring this means that we need to use the additive rules of probability in this case so the probability of event either event a or b is like this and remember that this is the problem of not mutually exclusive event because there is a common point this means that probability of event a plus probability of event b minus probability of a intersection b so this means 0 0.20 0 
0 0.30 minus 0 0.15 and this give us that the probability is 0 0.35 for probability of A given B. So the probability of occurring either event A or B is 0 0.35 for this problem. Let's suppose we have another problem. Uh, suppose the, pro the second problem. Suppose the probability you will get a grade A is in this clause is 0 0.25 and the probability you will get B, a B grade is 0 0.5. What is the probability your grade will be above C? So it's a little different problem. Let's see. We have two events. That is A, grade A. Suppose we denote this event by A and for grade B we denote this event by B. And I will explain what type of this problem is. Problem 2. So this is problem 1. So A, let's sub, let A denote grade A, B denote grade B. Now you know that the probability of getting grade A is 0 0.25 and the probability of getting grade B is 0 0.50. Okay, so this is the information given in the problem. You can see uh, the probability that you will get a grade A is in this class is 0 0.25 and the probability you will get a grade B is 0 0.50. What is the probability that you will, your grade will be above C? This means that, this means that you will get either grade A or B. This is the statement of the problem. The statement is a little different, but you can translate into other words. What is the probability your grade will be above a grade C? This means that you will get grade A or B. You calculate you need to calculate the probability of grade A or B. So you can transform like this. This means that the probability of grade above C this is equivalent to probability of grade A or B you can say R instead of union so this is equal to probability of A plus probability of B and remember that grade A and grade B are mutually exclusive there is no common point so you do need to consider the third form and just need to add the probabilities that is 0 0.25 plus 0 0.50 that's give 0 0.75 so the probability that your grade above C is 0 0.75 we have or two three more problems so let's solve different problems so that your concept will be more clear okay okay so this is interesting these are two are interesting problem a student is taking two courses history and maths the probability the student will pass the history course as 0 0.7 0 0.60 and the probability of passing the math course is 0 0.7 the probability of passing both is 0 0.50. What is the probability of passing at least one? So, let's, this is problem number three. This means that suppose H denote history, suppose H denote history course and denote math maths course and the probability of passing history as 0 0.60 
yapmayacak. Hepimiz Mahran yes. The probability of passing math course is 0 0.70 and the probability of passing both this mean history and math is 0 0.50 and the question is what is the probability of passing at least one of these courses so remember this is the problem of additive rule as I explained already that see this one you can use the additive rules of probability but remember this is now the events of not mutually exclusive so probability of history course passing or map course passing or you can say at least one of them as probability of history course and probability of passing of math course minus probability of history and math course so this is equal to 0 0.60 and 70 0 0.80 so this probability is equal to 0 0.80 so the probability of history or math passing of history or math is 0 0.80 for this problem and it's our another problem and this this is this problem a study by national Park services reveal that 50% of the vacationers going to the Rocky Mountain region visit Yellowstone Park, 40% visit the Tetons, and 35% visit both. What is the probability a vacationer will visit at least one of these attractions? So at least will mean this is the problem of additive rules. Okay. So let's yellow denote y denote Yellowstone Park and t denote ketones. So let's start Yellowstone Park and ketones. Problem four. Problem number four. Let's y denote. Y denote Yellowstone Park Yellowstone Park and T denote T tones. So now the question is uh, okay, and I remember that person vacation going to the Rocky Mountain region with it so the probability this is these are the percent so you just multiply this by 100 so you can get the probability for Yellowstone Park 50% vacationer visit so the probability is 50% that they will visit this place and 40% visit the other place Teton so this means that the probability of visiting Yellowstone Park is 0.50 the probability of tones that is 0 0.40 and 35 percent is for both this is 0 0.40 and probability of yellow anti-tone that is equal to 0 0.35 now the questions are there are three questions what is the probability a vacationer will visit at least one of these attractions so this is simple problem that at least what is used so this is the problem of additive rules of probability i will not use these a b i will use y r t to instead of this this is equal to probability of yellow park plus probability of using t tones minus probability of using visiting both so this is equal to 0 0.50 plus 0 0.40 minus 0 0.35 so this is equal to you can subtract this is 0 0.55 the probability of visiting at least one of these places as 0.55 
Now the second question in this problem is what is the probability 3.5 cards? So this is for both. I mean, uh, this probability mean that both places can be visited. The place Yellowstone Park can be visited or the Titoon can be visited. So this 35% up, you can say the vacationer can visit these two places, both places. Okay, so this is the solution. Uh, for the second question. The third question is are the units mutually exclusive explain? Okay, so we need to explain for second part. This was part one. Part one. Part A. Part B. 35% of visitor. Or you can say vacationer, it is mentioned in the question. Vacationer, vacationers can visit both places. Or C, the events are the question. Let's see the question again. Are these events mutually exclusive? You explain. These events are not mutually exclusive because there is a common point they can visit both places. These events are not mutually exclusive. You can explain this with this diagram. Suppose yellow or antitone. So yellow, antitone, and this is yellow antitone both. So this is not mutually exclusive event. These are not mutually exclusive event. Now let's come to another problem that is making different problems. Uh, what is the probability that a card chosen at random from standard deck of cards will be either a king or a heart? Okay. Uh, Let's denote this problem is solved here. So let's this is problem five. Problem five. Let let's a denote the event that the card run. as a king again let's be denote there's a card run as a heart as a heart so what is then what is the question the question is what is the okay what is the probability that a card run uh, at random from a standard deck of card will be either a king or a heart. So you can see that there is a word, the word is used that either. So this means this is a problem of additive rules. So this means problem A or B, king or heart. This is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B because there is a common point. There are the probability of A, I mean king, there are four kings in a standard dip. So this means that this is four by 52. There are 13 hearts. So the probability of hearts is 13 divided by 52. And remember that there are one king in the heart. So this means a intersection B. There is a common point that is 1 divided by 52. So now you can calculate this probability just putting the values A union B or A or B 4 divided by 52 my plus 13 divided by 52 minus 1 divided by 52. Just simplify this. Simplifying this 52 
4 plus 13 minus 1. This will give you 16 divided by 52. The probability of getting a king or a heart is this probability 16 by 52. So this is all about the ADT rules of probability. Uh, you can solve other problems. Also, if you can see the signs of the ADT rules of probability. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, see you in the next video. Ciao.